Consumer problems, it's over to Julia, Gloria and Angela for the final rip-off Britain Live. Yes, thanks, Charlie and Naga. It is indeed the last in our special week of live editions of Rip Off Britain. But you know what? We won't be going quietly. <laughs> Quite the opposite, in fact. So stand by for another programme that's absolutely packed with advice that you really don't want to miss on everything from understanding instruction manuals, something we all need to know a bit more about, to uh, knowing which restaurants have basic hygiene standards. And we'll be unpicking what some people are calling the biggest consumer scandal for decades. Mm. The question is, is your tumble dryer one of the five million at risk of catching fire? We asked you to tell us what's left you feeling ripped off and you contacted us in your thousands. You've told us about the companies you think get it wrong and the customer service that simply is not up to scratch. I've complained and complained and nobody takes any notice of me. In all honesty, I think it's just a way for the shops to make more money. You've asked us to track down the scammers who stole your money and investigate the extra charges you say are unfair. You don't want to spend any more, but yet they're always trying to offer you little things extra. And when you've lost out but no one else is to blame, you've come to us to stop others falling into the same trap. Rang up the company and they went, oh, it isn't our fault. So whose fault is it? So whether it's a blatant rip-off or a genuine mistake, we're here to find out why you're out of pocket and what you can do about it. Your stories, your money. This is Rip Off Britain. Hello and welcome to Rip Off Britain Live. We've enjoyed your company all week long, but sadly, all good things must come to an end. And today is the last day of our run of live shows. We are sad about that. Enjoyed them enormously, <laughs> haven't we? Yes, but uh, we've still got a pack 45 minutes ahead, and we're going to be using every moment of that time to solve your consumer pro pro problems. But first, a big, big story we featured last month, and it continues to make the headlines. The safety of 5.3 million tumble dryers. The manufacturer Whirlpool insists that while it sorts out the problem, the dryers can still be used. But I have to tell you, there's a growing number of people with a good reason to disagree with that. In scenes straight out of a disaster movie, West London was brought to a standstill. It quickly became apparent that this was really a substantial fire, a uh, huge scale. The flames were licking up at the side of the building over several floors. On a warm August day, 120 firefighters were quickly scrambled to a block of flats in Shepherd's Bush. Fire was ripping through the middle floors of an 18-storey residential tower block. Amongst them was head of fire investigation, Charlie Pugsley. I could still see the smoke coming from several floors on the tower block. There was a large police cordon in place. We had 20 fire engines plus specialist units. We had the Metropolitan Police, the ambulance service. So it really was a significant incident. Local MP Andy Slaughter also rushed to the scene. First, you have a sense of disbelief because you don't really expect something like this to happen, and certainly not in your patch and to people you know. At least 50 people were evacuated from the building. It becomes very apparent that the amount of smoke produced and with windows open, a few breaths of that smoke, it could be, uh, be life-threatening. The disruption and the damage and the loss of property uh, was great, but the trauma as well. We had very elderly people, people in their 90s. We had uh, people in wheelchairs who all had to be evacuated. An absolutely horrific situation to be in. The cause of the fire, as you'll have guessed, was one of the five million tumble dryers that the manufacturer Whirlpool last year announced were at risk of catching fire. We had early witness information that indicated that the fire had started in the tumble dryer. However, we still had to look at it and look at all the physical evidence and make sure the forensic evidence gave us that picture. The owner of the flat told her MP she knew straight away that it was the dryer to blame. She was obviously very upset, but she was um, uh, very clear about exactly what had happened, of how the fire had started. And of course, it was a, a cause which is pretty well known now. And um, I don't think it was a surprise at all to the fire brigade. After a six week investigation, London Fire Brigade's forensic team confirmed a fault in the dryer had definitely started the blaze. And of course, it wasn't the first. Across the country, I'm aware of other incidents. 
So you really are starting to build up a bigger picture of that actually it's not just a one-off incident with misuse or a, an accident. In fact, over the last 12 years, at least 750 house fires have been linked to Whirlpool's tumble dryers, most of them because of a fault in models sold under its Hotpoint, Creda and Indeset brands and manufactured between 2004 and 2015. A review discovered potential safety issues where excess fluff in the dryers could catch in the heating element. The discovery led Whirlpool to announce what's thought to be the biggest safety alert in British history. But it didn't recall the dryers. Instead, it began the process of sending engineers to check and, if necessary, modify the appliances to ensure that they're safe. Good afternoon, you're through to Whirlpool. You're speaking to Heather. How can I help? But with millions of drivers to get through, that's been a very slow process. Last month, we featured the case of Laura Whitley from Bristol, who was told that she would have to wait 11 months before anybody could check if her appliance was safe. I mean, I was literally horrified. That is such a long time to have to wait, 11 months before someone can even come out and put the machine right. It just, to me, was totally unacceptable. In the meantime, Whirlpool insisted that it was safe to continue using a potentially affected dryer so long as it isn't left unattended and the filter is cleaned after each use. But unconvinced, Laura stopped using hers altogether. I definitely don't feel safe taking their advice. Certainly the week all this happened, there were two news stories where people had had their machine catch fire. But I'm not going to sit there and wait for that to happen just because I put my tumble dryer on. Laura had at least received notification from Whirlpool that her dryer could be a fire risk before there was a problem. However, John Wood, who's a taxi driver from Hampshire, says he only received that warning when it was too late. He'd registered his dryer when he'd bought it back in 2010, but he claims he didn't initially receive any safety notice. So with no idea that the company was now warning not to use the appliance unattended, he thought nothing of putting it on while he dropped his wife off at work. But when he returned home, he saw smoke coming through the door. I was just in sheer panic. I could hear the dogs screaming, howling, you know, a different type of howl that they normally do. Yep, so I got in here, this whole room's covered in smoke. I've headed for the kitchen door. I've kicked the door open. The dogs have run past me. They've bolted outside. Um, I've got to here and notice that in the corner there, it was all glowing. This whole room was full of smoke. It wasn't until later on, once the fire brigade had been and pulled it out, that they confirmed that it was a tumble dryer that had gone up in flames. John's two children were at school when the fire ripped through the kitchen. But the family's two lovely Dalmatians, Holly and Rosie, were in the house. And this shows the pair of them afterwards covered in soot. Sadly, I'm afraid it turned out to be the last picture of Holly ever taken. She died presumably of smoke inhalation later that night. I went to call Holly out and she just didn't respond. She died in her seat. The kids, luckily enough, they didn't see it because they were around my parents' house at the time. Um, I broke down in tears that night. I have been for the past few nights after that. Um, the wife was devastated because it was our first family pet that we had together. It was a member of the family. She was with us for eight years, nine years. Carter was one of our kids. Well, we can sympathise with that. It was three weeks after the fire that destroyed his kitchen and led to Holly's death that John says he was finally made aware by Hotpoint that his dryer was potentially at risk. And if that wasn't bad enough, his home insurance won't pay out for the damage to his house because the policy doesn't cover fires caused by an unattended appliance. So as John waits to see what Whirlpool will do to put things right, he knows what he thinks should happen. I want to see every affected tumble dryer that they have got, or appliance that's affected, be pulled out of everybody's home. Back in Shepherd's Bush, the owner of the dryer that caught fire definitely had received a safety notice from Whirlpool. And according to the fire brigade, had been following the company's advice to the letter, but none of that stopped it going up in flames. In the case of this fire, we have really good information that the person using the tumble dryer had followed all the manufacturer's recommendations. 
they're in the property a while using it, they're regularly cleaned out the fluff and lint filter, and as far as we're concerned, they've done everything absolutely correct. London Fire Brigade is now calling on Whirlpool to change its advice to owners of affected models, because despite what the company says, it doesn't believe that any of these dryers should be used until they've been repaired or replaced. London Fire Brigade believes that they should change their advice to their customers that they should not use those tumble dryers until they've been fixed by one of their engineering team. We understand you can't stop all fires occurring, but for us it's just getting to the point that if you know that a fire's got the potential of starting, to us then that should be the point where you say, please don't use it. MP Andy Slaughter agrees and is amongst those who can't understand why Whirlpool didn't immediately issue a full product recall. What happened to my constituent here, I think, just shows that that advice is not correct. She was told, you can carry on using it, don't leave your flat, don't leave it on when you go to sleep, but otherwise it's safe to continue using it. It clearly wasn't. I think it's uh, unbelievable that Whirlpool are still saying to people, you can carry on using it. That is, to my mind, only being done for their convenience, their commercial convenience, and it's just not good enough. And, uh, you know, this is a matter of public safety, and they need to act now, and if they won't act, then the government have to tell them to act. With pressure on Whirlpool growing, the Consumer Minister Margot James has said that she'll be ordering the company to do more to reassure customers and the wider public. At the same time, she announced the creation of a new working group on product recalls and safety. But John Wood hopes for more immediate action. I want every single affected product removed from people's houses before somebody does lose a life. We've lost a life with a dog. To us, it's a child. So every single product needs to be removed. Stop using them, switch them off, unplug them, don't use them again. Such heartbreaking stories behind every one of those cases, aren't they? Really frightening. Well, Whirlpool has told us that uh, its thoughts are with all of those who were affected by the Shepherd's Bush fire. But as the independent foris forensic investigations into the incident are still ongoing, it really would be inappropriate to comment further at the time. But it also said the, the same is true with John Woods's case, but it was saddened by his loss and it has contacted him directly. And the company went on to insist that safety is its number one priority and it's committed to ensuring its tumble dryer modification program is carried out in a safe and timely manner. And to speed things up, it's doubled its engineering call centre teams and introduced a more convenient booking system. But Whirlpool hasn't changed its advice that dryers waiting to be checked can still be used as long as the filter is cleaned after use and they aren't left unattended. Well, a lot of that advice is a bit questioning in my mind, but joining me now are Pete Moray from Witch and consumer champion Lynn Falls Wood. Now, the whole point is, I mean, I'm trying to relate it to myself. First of all, I don't want a machine that's likely to go on fire. I do not want to watch the machine going on fire. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. So why so much conflicting and, in my opinion, bad advice? Well, that's a good question. Why is there this bad advice? And I think having watched that film and hearing what London Fire Brigade are saying, I think our advice is to not use these machines until you've had a repair or a replacement. And uh, the problem is that consumers really are getting conflicting advice. They're getting conflicting advice when they're speaking to Whirlpool, and it's really worrying. Very briefly, what did you find when you went undercover, when, when you actually researched this whole subject? So Witch did some research back in May. We spoke to 800 people who'd been affected who had one of these machines, and we did 30 undercover calls to the Whirlpool call centre to find out what was going on. We found a lot of problems. The first thing L like is... Like what? Well, the first thing is that actually they were telling um, people that it would take 8 to 10 weeks just to get a customer identification number. Now, until you have that number, you can't start the process of getting a repair and replacement. We were getting back advice we had call centre staff telling us it's nothing to worry about and yet here we have Whirlpool saying that actually you have to sit there with your machine the whole time I mean, it's so, ridiculous. so some real problems and also some of our are the people who wrote to us waiting 11 months uh, you know waiting for somebody to come out so Lynn yours was an independent report for the government yeah what I was asked find? to do it nearly two years ago for the first time and here we are and the government I think is sitting on their hands Everyone at Whirlpool and their staff should be made to watch your package there. That was a, a, 
a brilliant example of what can happen. First of all, another block of flats could go up in fire. Think of the fear, Whirlpool, that those people felt watching all that smoke going past their windows. Mm -hmm. And they're the 11th, 12th, there are 18 floors in that building. And then think of the firemen that are going in there, because I know from talking to them, their hearts were pounding because they didn't know what they'd find. And the last time they went into a big block of flats fire, there were deaths. Yeah, so yeah so I was just really going to say important. that the whole block could potentially go up in smoke, yeah. uh, which, which would be horrendous. Yeah. Now, now, the I'm, thing I found, sorry. though, sorry, don't I interrupt mm. you for a second. Interrupt, OK. But this was an independent <laughs> review of the government, and I found that the system's broken. The recall system just doesn't work properly. Yeah, am I being naive here in thinking that the cost of, of employing more engineers, you know, all the effort to try and check them, to try and modify, why don't they just withdraw all of them well, it's, and replace? It's a good question, and I think there is a, a problem with the recall system. Lynn did her report, and yet not enough has been acted on it. We had a steering group that came out of that, and now the minister has said that they're setting up yet another working group. And we're fed up of reviews and steering groups and working groups. We mm. want action, we want changes yep. so that these kind of situations can't happen, and so that um, the, the system that we have is safe. Yeah, we should point out, of course, maybe we're talking about deaths and blocks of flats. We're not saying that that has happened no, no, yet no, because of thing, but not. potentially absolutely a block not. of flats could go well, up. There are 5.3 million washing machines that we're talking yeah, about yeah. here. So now, there are a lot of people out there who don't even know if they could be affected. But because it's an American company, is that why the government aren't hitting harder? Um, well, it's a huge company. It's one of the biggest in the world. It's based in Peterborough now. That's where they bought the head office of these companies. And you've got trading standards in Peterborough dealing with an enormous company. And that happens time and again. Well, I was asked to do this review because the safety laws weren't adequate in this country and the opinion of the House of Lords that were driving change. Mm. And the review was announced to stop those changes in the law. And I think we still urgently need changes yes, in the law. Yes, we could talk about it. this all day, but in one word, what would you do? Well, I think the government needs to review this case specifically. Look at the Whirlpool case, look at what went wrong, and then it needs to set out what actions it's going to take. Not and another review. Be... <laughs> <laughs> but it has to be down the, to the government to look at this case, the specific issues that have happened here, and say what they're going to do as a Well, thank you both very much, and it throws a lot of light on your investigations. Thank you. Thank you. Look like. I have to squeeze this one in. It is for Sarah. La Flynn from London said he tried to buy an electrical item priced at £45. At the till it was 60 but the manager refused to honour the price. Was he right or wrong? The manager was in his rights. You'd feel that the price is the price you should legally be able to buy, but the rules don't actually say that. It's a bit more tricky. Well, that leaves us more or less out of time at the end of what's been a wonderful week for us. We've had an absolute blast <laughs> doing these live programmes, haven't we? Oh, yeah, and may I say, sorry, just one thing. I think all the experts have done a brilliant job this you week. Have. Been fantastic, so well done. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm delighted to say we'll be back doing even more of them next year. So thanks to everyone who's contacted us uh, this week. We're really sorry we couldn't include all of your comments and questions, but uh, they really will help us decide what we're going to put and investigate next in future programmes. Yes, we've got food and holiday yeah. series coming up. And also, we would like to remind you that there's more Rip Off Britain at the same time next week, so tune in. In the meantime, thanks for your company all this week and from us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.